1982 season. Some consolation for the Eagles, Chris Judd, who won the Norm Smith medal as the best player on the day. A sea of red, white, blue and yellow came streaming towards the MCG as early as eight hours before centre bounce. Sydney and South Melbourne fans believe this is the day they've been waiting for for 72 long years. But for West Coast, there was no room for sentiment. Go Swan! Go Swan! All of Sydney's Christmases had come at once, their first grand final since 96, but the Eagles weren't overly outnumbered in the crowd of over 90,000. Delta Goodrum lived out her dream of performing at a grand final in a tribute to some of Australia's athletes taking part in next year's Commonwealth Games. She was joined by international stars like Michael Bublé and Moody Pond's most famous export. But there was no doubting who the real stars of the afternoon were. West Coast emerged without injured forward Phil Matera and Sylvie Palladino put aside all of the controversy to cap off the pre-game extravaganza. Sydney went for the flood in defence but it couldn't stop Mark Nikoski. Ruckman Darren Jolly responded as Sydney levelled the scores. Brownlow runner-up Daniel Kerr was forced out of the game early on with a leg injury. Chris Judd was dangerous with 11 touches in the first quarter. And big man Dean Cox was also full of running. Two bounces and the perfect finish from right on 50. Barry Hall put a coat hanger on David Wirapunda. The tackle sparked an all-in brawl. Adam Schneider came off the bench to spark a Sydney comeback. And when Hall was brought down illegally inside 50, the Swans had somehow wrestled back the lead by quarter time. There was worldwide applause when Tyg Kennelly gold for only the second time this season, friends and family in Ireland rising as one. West Coast went goalless in the second term while Adam Goods extended the lead to 20 at the long break. Goods can! Goods! 39 points, the Eagles' lowest halftime score of the year. An Andrew Embley-inspired performance brought the Eagles back into the contest in a third quarter that saw Sydney scoring dry up. Adam Hunter was sent into the forward line and made an immediate impact. Sydney's lead had been reduced to just two at the final change. He might have nailed it. He has! Luke Ablett cost his side a goal when he served it up on a platter for Cousins. With the match threatening to slip away, Captain Hall led from the front and stemmed the tide. O'Loughlin was bringing down the marks but wasn't converting. It was left to Eamon Buchanan to wrestle back the lead for Sydney. It turned out to be the match winner. Buchanan puts him in front. A thrilling final five minutes saw the Eagles almost snatch a last gasp victory. But Leo Barry's courageous mark in the dying seconds will go down in history. Point margin was the closest grand final since 1979. Canelli sent a message back to his homeland. Jason Ball became a dual premiership player in his final game of AFL. Time to celebrate for captain and coach as both picked up the premiership cup for the first time. To the people who've waited 72 years to see South Melbourne slash Sydney Swans win the premiership. Here it is! A moment so many Bloods fans thought they'd never get to experience. Christian Jansen, SBS Sport. The Swans no longer the ugly ducklings and that brings us to tonight's Toyota World Sport poll and following the grand final performance by the Sydney Swans, we want to know, do you believe AFL will ever become more popular in Sydney than rugby league? Simply text yes or no to 19 99 88 97 and as ever we'll bring you the result in tomorrow night's programme. Last night, we asked who will be the leading goal kicker in the 2005 AFL Grand Final. Barry Hall, Michael O'Loughlin, Michael Gardner, Ashley Sampy, or none of the above were the options. Well, the majority of 38% went for Barry Hall to kick the most goals. And of course, we all know now what happened. Thank you to everyone 